Hi everyone, welcome back to Paper Pioneer Live here on the Old Demo Dave channel with me, Old Demo Dave, and I'm joined with Scott, and we're looking at Is It Phoenix versus Vactors Fams. Scott, I know you're not a, a Pioneer player. Even from your perspective, though, what would you say about this matchup? Phoenix versus Raktos Vampires, isn't it? We've seen this a million times, a million different ways. Phoenix beats Raktos Midrange, 61%, looking at the matrix that I'm looking at, and loses to Raktos Vampires at 42%. So, favoured for the Raktos Vampires players. Everyone's seen this a million and one different times. I thought we could just have some fun with it today. Absolutely, and uh, big shout out to Idris who is on the match today. He recently was a runner-up in a 32-man RCQ locally to us. So, um, someone who has taken Phoenix, played some vampires, and got some wins. So, hoping to learn a little bit from him today whilst they're going up against um, the vampires player with uh, basically the stock vampires list. Um, I'm not too sure if Dusk Legion Zealot has rotated out of the list at this point, um, or if uh, maybe like we you know we're trending to some different vampires, but um, it's the classic we're on like turn three and uh, we see four, four cantrips in the bin and uh we're about to see um the ledger shredder so when when would you when do you think we'll see fatal push roughly now ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> i might not play very much pioneer but i know how to fatal push a ledger shredder Absolutely, and uh, we're keeping, keeping up uh, a go for the throat uh, mana basically here, isn't it? Just in case there was another shredder um, which comes down, but um, potentially looking to just dig through the phoenixes or even actually just to be able to ancestral recall, aka treasure cruise, um, now that the uh, now that the bin is full. I remember treasure cruise is a fair and balanced magic the gathering card and it should continue remaining legal in Pioneer. Uh, because it's obviously not a problem because Phoenix has been at the top of the meta for what three years now. Yeah, it's pretty much been there or thereabouts, right, at all times, and uh, had a little slight uh, dip when Mono Green was doing its thing. Um, on the up uprise again as well, Mono Green, by the way, that's uh, one we need to keep a, a lookout for. Um, but yeah, d a, a solid deck for solid players everywhere looking for their RCQ invites. Whilst we see a Ledger Shredder, we're gonna tap. We're gonna tap just one and take all, a full six out of the graveyard. Um, keep him back. I consider. Oh, the instant right for um, for fiery impulse is uh, would be the reason for that. And uh, yeah, you want you want to always leave instants and sorceries in the graveyard to make sure that fiery impulse is turned on if you like so it can actually deal its full damage so that is a bit of triumph in response to the connive trigger yeah. um, are we uh, losing three there yeah lucy loses three and uh goes uh, to 16 but you take those i think i think you take like you know your, your, shred your shredder helps you dig it doesn't it very very really wins you the game right like you do sometimes see like four six shredders or five seven shredders but most of the time you just want to use them to get the connive off to cycle through your deck and get your phoenixes on the board well, that one connive managed to put the arc light phoenix in the bin uh just before idris drew three cards and probably drew three spells to uh then get that phoenix back so that's exactly why shredders in the deck is yeah uh, sometimes sometimes you just kind of hit it um and just firing impulse in the uh, blood type there I mean, potentially it's not a very st strong hand we do see oh that's not the hand you want to see on the thought scene well, i guess we're taking the galvanic iteration because we're not taking one of the phoenixes but also like you're just like sure right on the galvanic iteration you're just like okay sure no worries um you know if i need to flash it back i can um here comes shelly uh big big draw um, because this will help slow things down, but you know, all we really need is a fiery, uh, a light. I always want to say fiery war axe rather than a lightning axe. Um, talking a half stone, but uh, we've just got um, once upon a time, oh, and it's not uh, allowed. <laughs> uh, not anymore, no, not on the channel, you know, hashtag sponsored and all that. Um, <laughs> but uh, we see Phoenix holding up a blocker. Uh, uh, no swinging in. It's almost like literally. Uh, it just it just is listening and goes. Nope, I'm not. I'm not going to let that happen. Comedy says no. Uh, this this shoulder can be like dangerous very very quickly. Um, but the big thing is is they don't really want to remove the phoenixes at any point here. 
uh, because um, you know it's like a, it's uh, it's wasted it's wasted uh, tempo. I wonder what the top deck will be. This is one of the classic Phoenix spots where they will top deck a treasure cruise and they'll just win the game next turn. Yeah, that's the way it normally goes, isn't it? Is you start to think you're stabilizing, you're thinking you're starting to get a bit too comfortable, and then uh, they 12 you out of the graveyard and uh, you pack your stuff up and walk outside for a cigarette and start crying, talking to your friend about how unlucky you got. Um, talking of uh, crying, it just has to let the shot, the sorrow resolve and uh, ping down a phoenix, but you know, phoenix is can can be in the bin and that can be okay whilst uh, we take an opt off the top maybe you would have seen an argument to galvanic there because not know what you were getting you could have at least double opted i mean as you said idris knows what he's doing here he he might be uh pocketing that galvanic knowing that at some point he is going to be getting a treasure cruise here especially if he has that pick like prankster available Copying a treasure cruise is a lot more valuable than just copying an opt. Yeah, but at this point, actually, really, really needs to remove the shally because the life total is going to dwindle away before you can say uh, zero. Well, um, zero, and uh, he's still not quite dead, so uh, we <laughs> might have a game on our hands here. Um, this this stops the attack um, by holding. This stops the, the attack by holding up the phoenixes. So. Uh, that's uh, not the worst outcome. We saw a spell pierce, I believe, in a Tristan stand there. Yeah, oh, we got another free the Fey, actually, and another Phoenix. Oh, okay. Yeah, double blocking. That's that, that's fair. Um, another shouldered. That's the usual play when you see something like that. And, I mean, I uh, think both players are happy with that, really, because from Idris's point of view, he's got through a shouldered and uh, dealt with the first one. And Lucy's gone, well, I've held off those uh, those phoenixes for one more turn, and I still get to make use of the second children I've got in my hand. This is, uh, this is uh, I think this is where, like, it was proven that, you know, it just is making good moves. Um, he's double, he's copied the, he's copied the Free the Fae, um, sees a lightning axe, which uh, makes absolute good sense. And uh, from here, I think, uh, this could be a this could be a very difficult spot not to win from, but uh, at least you got some tricks up their sleeve. Yeah, so this is going to be first one takes the lightning axe. Second one, uh, I think considering the temporal trespass, there was the the hesitation. I'm not sure though. Second one sees a treasure cruise as well, so uh, we're going to take the cruise. We're going to take that lightning axe. Bonk Shieldred on the head with it, discarding the third Phoenix. Get our Phoenixes back. Oh, it's Lucy just cracking the blood in response to the uh, Lightning Axe there. So we move to combat. Three Phoenixes come back. Sorin's going down. Or, it looks like... Yeah, two, two at the Sorin, one at Lucy. So knocking that life total down and dealing with the very powerful Planeswalker. Yeah, very impressive. Like just getting, getting a, a very, 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 very switched around board state. Um, the Fable uh, coming out is usually a powerful card at this point. P potentially not enough. Running two cards and drawing two is okay. It might potentially dig Lucy towards something, but this is uh, if you don't manage to get a Vein Ripper stuck, this can be quite rough for Vampire's pre-board. Uh, especially with Idris having that other treasure cruise that we saw taken off the second Free the Fae. Lucy's just going to get drowned in cards here. Uh, and the one thing I do want to mention as well, looking at this, looking at Phoenixes on the board, is uh, Wizards. I'm bound faithless looting in modern, you cowards. I want to I wanna get some mileage out of my Phoenixes again. Oh, absolutely. And and with some of like the... Uh... The, the, the uh, put cards in your graveyard spells we've seen in MH3. Like, I think there's like a cool little Quixus build that could be built, uh, but would need extra engines like Faithless Looting, right, to get there. Um, yeah, you can't so... just entirely rely on Buried Alive. It's, it's a good card for sure. Putting three cards in the graveyard is very powerful. Do you want to do it in modern when you could untap and potentially just die after that? 
Yeah, probably not, but I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. But I've also been right before, however rare it may be. So I'm um, just correcting life totals here. Um, Lucy, uh, Lucy on nine. Um, probably thinking about how do we do this? How do we get out of this spot? How do you, Is... how do you dig yourself out from this position where your opponent's got uh, lethal on board and what what is that two cards in hand yeah two cards in hand they must have a decision which is why they're thinking about it i, I, I guess there's uh yeah they, they've actually been in both so uh i don't again not too sure what the the uh the search was for but uh yeah and that, they, might, this... they may have just been running through what they potentially could uh draw into or get access to yeah absolutely that you know, great show in there from Idris in uh, game one. Um, si sideboarded this this matchup does change. Uh, graveyard hate coming in, will and one sided graveyard hate with things like Layland of the Void is going to be the difference. And this is where like Idris has to do the balance of: Do I fully commit to a different plan, or do I just try and fight through a trickier plan? Um, I think the balance here is not knowing the direct uh, decks and the sideboards is by bringing in drakes. I think we just saw a couple of drakes slid into that deck there. And uh, maybe coming off like the um, temple trespass like um, angle and not worrying about taking double turns and thinking more about just having big creatures on the board. I used to like the crackling drake uh, sideboard pivot that you could see out of Visit Phoenix. It's not that impressive in the face of a vein wrapper i find where before it was well i can play a crackling drake uh insulate it against removal with spell pierce and protect it and ride it to victory when your opponent can slam down a vein ripper it's way less impressive yeah absolutely and uh you know the, the, there's been lines uh in some phoenix decks to actually now have slick shots show offs in the uh, sideboard to actually turn into more of an is it tempo deck in a post-boarded matchup but you know that's uh it we'll, we'll leave that we'll leave the brewing for modern season now and uh think about how we can uh, do cooler things with some of the things we've seen in the recent spoilers um this is just a great like a great turn three but you know a reasonable follow-up um with a free the fey you don't want to see a crackling drake here because it's one of the cards you want in your hand but you can't go and get um however we move on and there is plenty more cantrips of the sea here looking to um get through to that strong position yeah one of popular belief crackling drake not a fairy absolutely so and very surprisingly not a fairy in the same way that i found it really surprising recently like um kellen's Kellen, um, the son of Oko, is not an elf. Um, they are very much a human scout. They don't even, they, they are, which was a very, you, you know, you know, when you look at a card and you go, like, that card must have reach, and it never has reach. <laughs> it's uh, it's the same, same, same with the the uh, the Kellen line. I just thought they must have been an elf, but we move whilst we see Preacher the Schism getting in for extra uh, uh, attacks. It, I, I, I am going to spoil you, I'm afraid. It's a fairy, and it is actually a fairy. It's a fairy. Because Oko's a, a fairy. Aren't they an elf? No, they're a fairy. Bad, bad law on my behalf. They feel like they should be an elf. It feels like they should be an elf. You didn't lose to Oko Thief of Crowns enough when it was legal in, I mean, pick a format. I think it's banned and everything, but vintage at this point. Yeah, very true. Very true. Uh, this could be Drake's. Uh, this is four mana tap. This is Drake. It's uh, resolving. And uh, it just is making some counts and saying, that's a 5-5. Five five. Um, what do you want to do about it? Can't be, uh, can't be fatal push, but can be go for the throw it. So uh, getting in for one. There are ways that the Rakdos Vampires that can find to Fatal push the Drake, so uh, cracking a Blood Token is a very popular one, sacrificing a Blood Tithe Harvester, uh, sacrificing something to Sorin. Uh, there are all ways that Lucy can turn on Revolt and get the Crackling Drake with a Fatal push. Obviously, oh, just... Idris, has ta Idris has tapped out for this on turn four, so no protection up just for now. Or just try and bait, or just try and absolutely bait out uh you know doing lots and lots of damage and uh having to use blockers but 
Strong position. We are going to see a Sorin um, in hand. Do they have it? Do they have the plus one? Or the, the minus they, two? They never they never put it on four loyalty when they have a Vein Ripper in hand. It's dice goes on one and the Vein Ripper's already on the battlefield. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh they've slow rolled me. Ah. Vein Ripper is here. Um, and is that Blood Tithe? Bit of triumph. Bit of triumph. Yeah, bit of triumph. So, taking three, getting rid of the Drake. Now that's a turn. That's 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 a court. That's that's literally turning the corner. That is literally like slamming the handbrake down and changing the board state one way. Yeah, this has gone from a game where we were looking at it thinking, oh well, how does how does Lucy come back here? Bidris has just slammed a uh, crackling Drake. It's a massive threat, and. Uh, in the space of five mana and one turn, we are now looking to address and going, well, how do you win the game from here, pal? Uh, probably by scooping and going to game three, if I'm going to be brutally honest. That's not how you win a game, Dave. <laughs> beat the clock. You ever played an MTGO? You need to beat the clock sometimes. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I, I've been the unfortunate person that has done that to a couple of people in Vintage Cubes, but... Uh, I've got a scrape by going 2-1 every single draft because then I can play another Vintage Cube, you see. Um, what are we seeing here? We're seeing a bunch of triggers hitting the stack. I'm not too sure if it just has fully calculated the order in here because... Are they are they talking about the the order in which the deaths happened? Okay. Now this is obviously F and M, and we would always encourage at any F and M level that you, uh, you know, like you talk to your opponent, and also if there was like a little misstep in order, and that you actually help them make what would have been a good, uh, a good play. But obviously at at, at Compral, you, you also would have to just let that thing go and be like, hey, if you want to do the wrong order, that's fine, pal, because that benefits me. But it looks like here. Um, we're talking about the lightning axe hitting the um, preacher first, and then hitting the um, vein ripper, which, like, obviously order and wise means that there's going to be an additional trigger as far as the uh, as as far as the as the life gain the life life gain in drain. So uh, that's a that's a that's a flip of four life there, um, which is not going to help Idris's cause. Immediately shocking in a Steam Vents as well. Zero regard made for his own safety here. <laughs> also, because you can get bolted for three at any point here, right? By uh, by Sauron, and then there are there is one Mute Vault there, so the ability to yeah, the Mute Vault can attack and then be upticked on Sauron, right? So right. he's he's dead on board. Oh no, he has a Phoenix. Okay. Oh okay, and a, oh hits yeah hits that down. Uh, another sign means okay, death. That, that was all done pre-combat then. Okay. Attacking here. Um, Playing the Fable? Oh, the Sauron? No, Fable. Oh, Fable. I'm glad it was Fable. There's a little bit of a slow wave if it wasn't, but um, they <laughs> are... Because <laughs> that would have literally just been GG, but um, they are in the driving seat. Like To be fair, Lucy has turned this around with one really solid big turn. Um, however, we've all been here. We've all been on the other side of one of these these treasure cruises. Will this treasure cruise um, get the answers and put this back in the... Put Phoenix back in the driving seat. Let's take a look. As I said, fair and balanced magic card, right? Yeah, why was Ancestral Recall ever banned? Was, was... That's fine. It's fine. It'll be coming but... in MH4 or something, I guess. MH4 Eldrazi Return, or the Eldrazi <laughs> Fight Back. Uh, we see land, Fiery Impulse, and a Consider. Fire Impulse is going to fire off onto the Gobbo, which is fine. Please don't a very good it. treasure cruise from Idris. Yeah, please don't attack though, it's just the mutant else gonna get you. Ooh. Uh, oh. Unless he has another removal spell in hand. Oh no, oh, play okay. the play the fate. That's fair, that's fair. Oh okay, okay. And 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 that, that fatal push will win them the game. Well, 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 well unless unless there's removal. 
Let's see. Oh, we see some. We see some on the top. So here comes the Muta Vault. Tap in with the black. Yep. Okay. Fair. The the overkill of lightning axe on a Muta Vault is those are normally reserved for killing vein rappers, but needs must in this situation. Yeah, we move. Uh, that would be the. Yeah, that would have been a, something you would have rather have hit with the follow-up, right? Yeah, so you, you've you traded the uh, the fairies of Tooth One, the Picklock Prankster, because it had to be fatal pushed on the second end. What do we see as a follow-up for this iteration? Oh! Another cruise. Remember, oh, remember what I said. Fair, fair and balanced. Fair and balanced. So it's that fine. is draw six. Correct. Now, now, Lucy's turn to turn the game was a powerful turn, but a fair turn. This is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, it's the, uh, I believe it was Cedric Phillips who I got this advice from, was when you're picking a deck for a competitive event where you want to win, you want to find the deck that makes it feel like you're playing a different format to everyone else. So, in this case, Idris probably feels like he's playing Vintage at this point. I mean... And what did he just play? What was that card? Is... Uh, Electrostatic Bolt? Electrostatic Bolt. Wow. If, if I'm correct on that, I need to see a Doctor. Do you know exactly what card that was that Idris just played? Let us know in the comments and we'll get you a uh, Arena Co card uh, or something like that. We can just give them all one for free. It's Beacon Bolt. So that oh, is deal damage, to, deal damage to a creature equal to the number of instant sorceries you own in exile and in your graveyard, and it has jumpstart. Well, if you are still here and you are, you leave us a comment saying, I also know it's Beacon Bolt, you could still get an Arena Co card. That is absolutely no problem. Um, still on a knife for edge, free? though. For free. Absolutely free. Not even hashtag sponsor, just from the kindness of our hearts. And... Um, <laughs> Still very, very much at the knife end because a Sorin will win this um, off the top. So I do, I do like obviously go by the edge of my seat, seeing this attack and not know what the follow up is. There's, there is a, there is some removal, definitely a fiery impulse, but not sure the rest. We are is. we are checking for my F1 fans out there. You need. It, they, they, they need to that's a that's very good sequencing because if there was a sorin they would have then been able to like bolt them for three so let's no no that is uh picking it up and it just showing it well of course you had four phoenixes by that point it just you've drawn 44 cards um ignore everything i said pre-match about the matchup matrix obviously data is incorrect uh because sometimes you just draw six cards for, for blue exactly and also showing in um, the older formats of magic where we get deck specialists sticking to a deck knowing your lines knowing your game plan can sometimes be better than just having the most powerful deck in the format shout out to Lucy though as well great player navigates vamps at a very high level but Idris you did a great job on this occasion taking down the dub we going to see a treasure cruise ban Scott or are we still stuck with this for another few months it's obvious that they're starting to balance the format around Treasure Cruiser's existence. Whether that is a mistake or not, that is up to you, dear listener. Uh, also, just to uh, very quickly go back on a point uh, about deck specialists. Idris has been playing Phoenix very well for a, a long time at a decent clip. Same with Lucy with Vampires. I'm going to refute all of that because I am a stan for play random Play what you want. Have fun, especially at FNM. Let us know what your random is in the comments. We'll be back with some more videos soon. See us on June seventh for our All Nighter MH3 um, streamer event. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. That's a hell of a fucking tragic crusade. Once, once again. <laughs> that fucking was. Like we keep having those.